Keeping with our current trend of Resident Evil, today we will be discussing the creature known as El Gigante. Just kidding, not El Gigante, El Gigante. This infected is going to be more animal than man, but what biological processes has the body had to undergo to reach such staggering proportions? Well, viewer, I am glad you ask. I believe I have a hypothesis on that, so let's jump into the lore and morphology of El Gigante, or the giant, from Resident Evil 4. As usual, let's start with a good old fashion origin story, shall we? El Gigante is going to actually just be a single human, surprise, surprise. Strange to say that when you look at the size of this creature, but after extensive, considered inhumane experiments conducted on it, the parasite has rendered the human to what we see now. Your average person is going to be taken to the experimental facility, much like how the regenerators were created, and had the Las Plagas implanted into their bodies rather than by natural infection. However, unlike the regenerators, this particular creature had the parasite implanted in the cervical area of the spine. This presumably has had an effect on its overall morphology concerning stance, but we will get to that momentarily. With this parasite sitting at the base of the brain, it could directly interface with the body and override certain information and impulses coming from the brain, but it would also have probably some influence on the brain itself. As with most infected, there appears to be a network of tentacles running throughout the body, increasing the strength of the creature beyond even its own size would suggest. These parasites seem to have a physical effect on the person, inducing many morphological changes as well as internal changes, but we will start with the outward appearance as that will require a lot less deductive reasoning. The musculature of El Gigante has been increased quite a bit with a more notable increase in the upper body of the person. Starting with the legs, they have been lengthened and muscle has clearly been added. However, the legs appear somewhat more proportional to the creature itself concerning a normal human size, as in like our legs aren't super massive, they're just proportional. But this suggests that perhaps the genetics of a person comes into play when the infection takes hold. Males will usually have larger upper bodies in comparison with their legs, with these legs appearing to have less muscle packed on them concerning the calf and the quadricep muscles. So perhaps the human DNA is still active and does have some influence over the Las Plagas. Which is strange considering that in the Resident Evil series, usually anything changed by anything is going to be barely resemble human. This would mean that the cells are predominantly used for biomass rather than actual genetic blueprints, but in this case of El Gigante, it appears the genetics are going to be used as the blueprints. Anyhow, the upper body is going to be much more muscular, sporting a bodybuilder-esque arms and forearms. This is going to give the creature a powerful grip and ability to rip trees out of the ground. The hands have also increased in size, but not proportionally to the arms of El Gigante. In fact, I would wager that according to the their proportions, they have become at least 1.5 times what would be a proportional size to the arms, and I am saying proportional a lot. To give you an idea of how large this creature is, the fingers themselves are going to be larger than a full-grown man's legs, but roughly the same size and length. The abdominal and chest region are going to sport very little fat, if any at all. While no visible abdominal muscle comes out of the surface, this may just be due to its posture, which is forward-leaning. Because very clearly, this parasite is going to have an effect on muscle growth, the pec muscles are going to be much more defined, allowing the creature to throw objects at great velocity regardless of their weight say like entire trees. The shoulders and neck are kind of an interesting part. The shoulders are going to, as expected, be quite large, but when it comes to the deltoid and trapezius muscle, they are going to be beefed up much larger than normal. This has had an effect on the head as it sits in a forward slumped posture, almost like the person looking at a computer too long. So after you're done watching this, go outside. The reasoning I can see for why the muscle has been increased specifically in this area is due to the Las Plagas. The creature understandably would probably realize that the cervical area is going to be relatively vulnerable to the parasite. In response, the muscle mass connecting the head to the body has been drastically increased to give protection from attacks. Due to its location in the neck, as stated, this has pushed the head down as it is no longer deemed as necessary by the parasite. So the parasite grows where it wants and everything else just kind of gets pushed out of the way. The head, however, is still somewhat in control, but probably really only 25%. I can 
imagine that the body could survive without the head at this point, but the body could not survive without the parasite. Just as kind of a side discussion, I don't know why, but something literally hijacking my body while I'm still alive, I, just thinking about that would be absolutely terrible. I don't know why, but the whole idea just sends a chill up my spine. Anyhow, the head itself is going to resemble a human head closely as what we would expect. They're going to be completely bald like most humans in the experiments, and the features are going to seem kind of human, but not very human. I know that isn't very descriptive, but it's the best I can come up with. You know how like sometimes you look at certain animals and you think, wow, there's really nothing going on in there. But then other times you like see a gorilla pick its nose and then you can just tell that the gorilla friend is judging it as it eats its own boogers. Well, El Gigante is going to be the former over the latter. Its face can make facial expressions of anger, but it's more or less just kind of slack jawed. The mouth is just going to be a dribbling mess of teeth and spit. Now we come to my personal favorite part, the internal processes, which I'm just 100% sure is everyone else's favorite part. First, the skeleton of this creature has had such extensive mutations that it would vaguely resemble anything human, probably going to resemble a very, very large ape. The creature is going to stand at 22 to 23 feet tall, even with its slouching posture. Every bone would have had to have been lengthened clearly, but due to the muscle and strength of this creature, lengthening is not going to be enough. Overall, unless bolstered with additional calcium or tentacles, the bones would shatter at their attachment points because the longer you make a bone, the weaker it gets. So, I imagine the entire skeletal structure has been wrapped in Las Plagas influence, giving the creature the ability to maintain its power even at larger size. The spine itself is an interesting portion because biologically speaking, why this creature wouldn't be a paraplegic is nothing short of amazing. When you lengthen the spine and bones, that's all well and good, but the spinal cord is what you need to focus on. I imagine somewhere there is a warehouse with just a ton of failed paralyzed El Gigantes as the spinal cord was stretched and snapped. However, with the ones that can walk, this could be circumnavigated in presumably two ways. The first is new nervous tissue is created, which is a possibility as clearly the parasite has the ability to make cells regenerate like in the regenerator or continue to grow like the muscle in El Gigante. Or option two, which does make more sense to me, the Las Plagas relays with the electrical impulses from the brain. This would mean that the parasite is now going to be the new nervous system, which again stacks up as El Gigante is not very well coordinated, which means the signal must be interpreted by the parasite through a Las Plagas plugged into the cervical portion of the spine and presumably the base of the brain where it can interact with the cerebellum. So this would allow the Las Plagas to completely get around having to use the nervous tissue of the human being, but that also makes sense why when you kill a Las Plagas, the body dies because there is no signal keeping the heart pumping, there's no signal keeping air going into its lungs, just everything is cut. Speaking of nervous system and brain, here's another thing to add to the pile. The brain operates at a reduced capacity. El Gigante is not a very intelligent creature and can be easily tricked. It's almost as if the brain has been atrophied somewhat during the mutagenic process. As to why the brain has been reduced could be for a multitude of reasons. To power such a large body, it could be that higher thinking portions of the brain were reduced to help mitigate locomotive tasks, and maybe higher portions weren't just as necessary and destroyed by parasite tentacles. Then, an option that makes sense is going to be an increase in testosterone, which I will cover in a moment. Either way, this has resulted in the creature being of a lower thinking order and able to be outsmarted by its smaller predecessors. Just to touch on the muscle again, this is an interesting process as how it is capable of building all this muscle. Clearly, the amount packed onto the frame would require a massive release of hormones. The Las Plagas could have stimulated the natural production of human growth hormone, testosterone, and insulin hormones, which are all considered anabolic hormones. Stimulating these hormones in mass quantity would eventually burn the brain out, maybe leading to brain damage, but it would result in a larger stature, larger bones, and larger muscle, a mainstay of El Gigante. It could be that Las Plagas stimulated the hormone area of the brain to increase its own size to influence over the body, and as a secondary result, this is going to change the body into El Gigante. This would make sense that the body is having these hormones course through its brain as its unbridled rage, even to friendly targets, is well pronounced. It would also make sense concerning the size of the parasite located on the spine of El Gigante. When injuring the creature enough, the parasite comes out of the back and it is massive. So massive, in fact, that it takes Leon quite a few slashes with his knife to even bring down the infected. So I'm going to 
be real with you, there are a lot of interesting ways to die and kill infected in Resident Evil 4 series, but this one is going to be okay at best. If you are able to outsmart El Gigante and cause enough damage to the parasite, eventually the parasite seems to die, which will also kill the creature. It will scream almost like a bull in pain before finally flopping down. Just don't get under it, as I'm sure it weighs several tons. If it captures you, it will begin crushing you, and its hands will kind of start this twisting motion. Now, I personally don't hear any snaps, so I don't think the twist kills you, which would have been cool. Instead, it will throw you down to the ground, and when it throws you, presumably this will shatter your spine, causing hemorrhaging in the brain and massive internal bleeding, leading to a rapid expiration of Leon. So, I had some serious writer's block with this creature, but as time went on, I found actually there was a lot to be said about El Gigante. I hope you guys enjoyed the video over him, and if you did, why not leave a like? If you are new here, then subscribing would be really bro of you, as YouTube literally, for some reason, uh, deleted like, I think, 1400 subs from me. It was very strange. Anyhow, I will drop a Discord link, Twitter link, and Patreon link down in the comments, but of course, since we are talking about Patreon, let me shout out the awesome people who support me in my YouTube endeavor. At the Scientist tier, we have Layla Lizarin, and then we got Master BC. Next up, we have four residents. G. Anderson, Richard Muhlenberg, Alex Parks, and A. Laurentis. Our geneticists are going to be Divine Whisper, John Russo, Scott Grant, and Andrew Lawson. With their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Javier D. Rodriguez, Lappy No Skill, and The Otter Man. Holding their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have A Big Fat Snake, A Higao Comics, Average Soul, Dustin Ellis, Ember Saffron, Eric Scott Gillies, Immature Cape, Jacob M. Pisoni, Joseph Radical, and Natsuki Chiaki. Thank you guys for your support, it really helps. Alright, so for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed my video, and I will see y'all in the next one.